Do I have to do something stupid at the beginning? Are you gonna like say something that's gonna be attention grabbing? Well, I, man, I know how to intro a video. Give them a reason to stay in the video. That'll make you stay in the video. <laughs> So recently on my channel, I've talked a lot about a few different things. One, I've been going through the breakdowns of my live plays, but two, I've been talking about the emotions involved with TTRPG specifically. And in talking about these, I always get interesting comments from people with just vastly different points of views. I'm not saying they're bad points of views. I am saying they aren't points of views that I would ever have. But one of them specifically was this huge emphasis on what fun in D&D looks like. And it was one of the good points of views. It's something I really want to talk about. What is fun at your table? Is a game fun? And should a tabletop game be fun? To that I answer, what are you trying to get out of it? That is a question that every group must ask themselves, not just the player, but the group as a whole. So many times I see comments about how do I find the right group? How do I find the group that I really fit with? And especially when I talk about Critical Role or Dimension 20, people talk about wishing that they could find a group that cared for each other as much as those groups do. And in order to do that, I really think one of the core questions you have to ask the whole group is what are you trying to get out of the game? See, I personally, when I run my games and play in them, I like emotional story beats. I like really thorough interactions and discussions about the characters and their emotional connections with each other, with their decision-making, what makes them them. I like a character-based drama, basically, is what I'm trying to say. But not every group likes that. And it leads to this question of what makes D&D enjoyable, what makes it fun? And the truth is, is fun doesn't necessarily have to be a factor, but fun is very subjective. I consider fun to be something that you enjoy doing and has some amount of levity to it. And that's a decent, I think, description of it, but I don't think it's the full description. And it's going to mean something different to everybody. When I was talking specifically early on in this month about how hard it can be sometimes to play through those emotional story beats, a lot of people said that they had experienced moments like that in their games and they did find it fun but also very draining. See, understanding what you want out of the game becomes incredibly difficult. And honestly, it becomes really tied into your character. We put ourselves into our character so much that oftentimes fun is the ability to express the characters in the ways that we want it. Are they supposed to be a John Wickish type of badass? Then if we can actually do that in the game, that's fun and that's really enjoyable. Or are they supposed to be an incredibly powerful healer and protector, but we never get the chance to do that? Then are we having fun with the character we created? But then it goes an even layer deeper than that because it's not just the mechanics, it comes down to, are you able to play the character as the character that they are? Their decision-making, their emotions, their motives, their ideals. And that is such a broad question that becomes really difficult to answer. See, I've watched a lot of live plays and a lot of the times I end up moving back towards critical role because I get to see the moments in between the really advanced moments. See, Dimension 20 is so focused on making sure that the sessions are watchable and I understand why, I'm not bashing them for that. But it does really miss out on just the D&D &D moments, the tabletop moments, watching the players interact with each other. And through these moments of watching them interact with each other, I've come to have a, what I consider, pretty decent understanding of what each of the group finds fun. See, Liam is much like me and wanting that character drama, really wanting to explore the darker moments of the characters. Liam clearly enjoys that and finds that fun. I'll tell you what though, for the first time in a very long time I feel Hopeful. You look like you feel hopeful, Caleb. <laughs> brown arm, you brown. <laughs> I'm not breaking. Meanwhile, Sam really likes to enjoy the absurdity of tabletop games, of going out and doing the most ridiculous antics and joking around in the funniest of ways. That is fun to Sam while still managing to find the emotional through beat underneath those goofy moments. Or we consider Marisha. Marisha finds some in the middle. She really likes the goofy moments, but she also likes to embrace the really dramatic moments as well. And so on, so on. I could go through every single player and talk about the things that they specifically seem to like, but it's very varied amongst all of them. But you'll notice that all of them have one through line, which is that emotional connection. They all want that emotional connection and to feel like at the end of a game that they could all look at each other and feel like they've experienced something special together and feel like they're closer to their friends while exploring some honestly pretty important emotional through beats that could be important in anybody's lives. That's fun to them. 
but it's not fun to everybody. I have talked so many times about emotional through beats in games and I've had people say that they just wanna have fun, they just wanna laugh. In fact, more often than not, the shorts that I create on the channel reach an audience which is not typical that usually watch my long form videos. And the people on those are ruthless. They say, what are you talking about? Tabletop games are just for fun, are for goose, for laughs. Why are you taking this so seriously? And I mean, yeah. Considering if you only play those games just to have a good laugh with your friends, then yeah, that makes sense. That's what you find fun. But then it comes to asking yourself that at your table. And that's when it gets really difficult because what if everybody doesn't want the same thing? What if somebody wants laughs and somebody wants serious moments? What if somebody wants a gothic campaign and somebody wants a mystery campaign? What if somebody wants to play just a general old Western campaign? And they all want those for different reasons. How do you find a campaign that's fun? How do you bring it all together? And I have two pieces of advice for this. Oh, I've slurred my words so much there. And I have two pieces of advice for this. One, I would really recommend being realistic over whether you should play games together. Don't get me wrong, I know it's difficult to find a group. It's difficult to find a group of D&D players that will sit together and schedule out regularly. And so the idea of splitting apart can be really daunting. And I'm not going to try and pretend that it's not, and I'm not going to give any advice outside of that. We do live in the age of the internet. You can find other people, but that's easier said than done especially for some of us socially awkward weirdos, of which I certainly fit. And so when you consider that, I can only leave that in your hands to decide, but the second part may actually help. See, when you take into account all the different things that people want at a table, it's honestly not impossible to find a through line through all of those. In the example that I gave there, I gave a bunch of campaign settings and reasons for playing. I want a goofy campaign, I want a serious campaign, I want a mystery campaign. All of those could be connected together, as long as you have trust in each other. Like I mentioned earlier, Sam is goofy and likes to have fun, but can find the emotional through line underneath that kind of stuff. You think you care about me? Yeah. Yes, asshole, yes. Yes, I'm sorry, you're right. You like me because I make jokes and I play songs and I give you a warm place to stay at night and I feed you fucking chicken and I heal you in battle but you don't really care about me, come on. Meanwhile, Liam really likes the very serious moments, but can find the levity in the serious moments. It's about compromise, but also collaboration, working together, understanding what people want from different scenes and helping them achieve those things. And then there's the dungeon master. Honestly, weirdly enough, I think the dungeon master is the easiest part of this. All you have to do is help the players find those connections and then just sit back and watch. You could easily see a goofy moment and then look at the player who really likes serious stuff and find a way to connect them in that moment. Say, make an insight check. Hey, you're seeing all this ridiculous stuff going on, but you're starting to wonder if maybe the goofy character is doing this to hide something deep down. Now, in order to do this, you have to understand the characters and the players very thoroughly, but that's already your job. It's already your job to understand that and to talk with the players and know what's going on and what everybody wants out of the game. And so, yeah that's gonna be something you should already be aware of. And if you're not, that's an opportunity for growth and something to look at. But finding the through lines amongst all the players is part, not even part, most of what the game master is supposed to do. Looking at all the players, creating a world they can all play in and making sure that they can facilitate the best story or game possible, or both. That is very important. And honestly, a lot of the times, games have different pillars of play. They'll have combat and exploration and social encounters. And finding where to focus in those moments can be great. The combat can be really goofy and the social encounters can be really serious and you can connect those pretty easily or vice versa. You can always find a way around it, but it really does take one of the single hardest things to do at a table, which is collaboration. And yet the game is about collaboration. So while it might be the hardest, it's also the core tenant that we should all be working on I'm really trying to find a way to do that with. And if you could do that, look around the table, understand what everybody wants, I really think you can create the best game possible at your table. I've been told that I have to tell people to like and subscribe or ask them to watch this video right here that just popped up on the screen because that's good for YouTube analytics. I don't like doing it, but I do see the number go up when I say to do it. So if you could, it would be amazing and I would really appreciate it very much. Go to the world, make it your own.